My name is Khalil Gibran Mohammed. I'm the director of the Schomburg Center, and it's a delight uh, to welcome you here this evening. Tonight, we are excited to present an author conversation with Eddie Glaude around his new book, Democracy in Black, How Race Still Governs the American Soul, as well as in conversation with Dr. Imani Perry. Uh, both of them uh, will have their books on sale. To introduce our speakers, uh, Professor Eddie Glaude is the chair of the Center for African American Studies and the William S. Todd Professor of Religion and African American Studies at Princeton University. He is the author of Exodus, Religion, Race, and Nation in Early 19th Century Black America, In a Shade of Blue, Pragmatism and the Politics of Black America, and an editor of the book Nation Time, Contemporary Essays on Black Power and Black Nationalism. He is also a friend of mine, and I am extremely uh, pleased to have him here uh, to discuss his new work. Dr. Imani Perry is his colleague and friend at Princeton University. She is also a professor of African American Studies and is part of the Center for African American Studies. Uh, she has written two amazing books, More Beautiful and More Terrible, as well as Prophets of the Hood, Politics and Poetics in Hip, in hip Hop. Uh, as they join me on the stage, I would like to um, ask you, well, let's just welcome them to the stage so they know it's time to come out. <laughs> um, so let me begin by thanking all of you for coming out in the monsoon-like weather. And also um, thank you to all of us, who, all the people who are joining us on live stream. And especially thank you to Khalil for a wonderful introduction. So, so can you talk about the, the relationship between the two, the kind of the, the economic dimensions, the sense of it, like that kind of, the sense of the kind of injustice that's rendered in all of, you know, where we live, what, how much money we make, how we die, all this, right. and the moral failings at the center of what, what this American problem is. See, that's what happens when you sit down and have a conversation with Imani Perry. That's the first question you get. <laughs> <laughs> so these moral claims aren't just simply spaces for sentimentality, right, where we want white people to act better right, or we should be good, right? It's really coming out of this Republican tradition which says that democracies require particular kinds of people, mm -hmm. particular kinds of dispositions, right? right? But we tend to tell the story of American racism like that, right? You achieve the American dream, big house on the hill, then some child is wounded by, 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 by some bigoted, mean-spirited adult, and then that child has to spend her or his life, the rest of her life, proving that she isn't that, right? When in fact, I had already knew at the age of eight that we were moving from the black side of town to the white side of town. Right. Because in our old neighborhood, when it rained, it flooded because the pipes were bad. Right. The sidewalks weren't paved. The baseball field, the grass was high. The houses weren't as good. The schools weren't as good, right? In my very built environment, I had already absorbed, right, the habits, right, the way in which we understand the way race works. Getting called a nigga was actually just icing on the cake. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Slap in the neck. Right? If black folk don't turn out in large numbers, then the Republicans are going to win, and you're going to get a Ted Cruz presidency. You're going to get a Donald Trump presidency. Y'all got to come out. And it's always from this space of fear. But what right. we've seen over the last few decades is a narrowing right. of black politics, right. a narrowing of what constitutes legitimate black political dissent. So it's now it's just a debate between liberals, right. right? Either you are a traditional black liberal like Jesse Jackson or some, or you're a post-black liberal like Cory Booker or Barack Obama. Right. Well, what, what are you going to do about power? What are you going in terms of policy? What are you going to do about chronic double-digit unemployment that has everything to do with a dual labor market? Right. Right. What are you going to do about the housing crisis, right? 240,000 homes lost. What are you going to do about our babies? What are you going to do about public education? What are you going to do about mass incarceration, right? What are you going to do about joblessness, long-term joblessness in our community, mm -hmm. right? And for, instead of us bearing the burden, right, of holding our fascism in this country, what are white folks going to do? Right, right. Mm -hmm. So you're right. drawing on a tradition, but you bring us to this organization that is that that centers LGBTQ 
um, experiences, right. right, that has a very kind of a strong critique of, of class inequality that has refused to endorse any candidates in this election, right? And so there's something also that you're suggesting about sort of what needs to be, what is at the center of your hope that I think is really Right, powerful. so I use that, I use Baraka's SOS poem, right, to say, come out, come out, come out, yeah. right? All of us, right? And it's not this hyper-masculinist gesture, Right? But it becomes the kind of opening for the claim that I make that not only do, if we're going to have to change our view of black people, we're going to have to change our view of ourselves. Right. No, it's about putting forward a much more complex idea of who we are right? and, 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 and what it means for a community to be in struggle together, together right. for real. Right. Right?